Good Saturday morning, Sunday afternoon, depending upon where you are in the city. Welcome to the Answer of the Lips. Today we have with us some very distinguished guests. I'm so honored to have them here. And uh, we have Dr. George Fishbeck, a television personality known throughout the world. And we are also honored to have with us today Judge David S. Cunningham the uh, third from the Superior Court, Los Angeles <laughs> Superior Court, and he is just amazing. He he is so valuable to us as a judge, as a citizen. You're going to enjoy this show. He has done so many things, and there is a picture of him. Uh, that I hope we opened up with on this show. If not, we'll take another look at it before we close. And uh, Judge Cunningham, as well as serving the community, he's also rubbed elbows with President Obama. <laughs> I didn't realize that until I was looking at the picture. So uh, we're just honored to have him with us today. Also, my beautiful co-host is an attorney in family law, Madeline Bryant Camby. And uh, later on in the show, we're going to tell you about if you need a free consultation, you can call Miss Bryant Camby here, and That's she'll right. take care of your family law matters. Mm -hmm. um, the way we open up every show, this is from the Halls of Justice. And uh, in honor of our very, very special guest, the judge here, and uh, Dr. George Fishbeck, I want to thank you for being here. Oh, and Madeline, thank you for helping me with this show because we've got some high-powered guests. We do. Uh, <laughs> we uh, really do. We, we pray in every show very quickly just to bless the community. So um, do you want me to pray it in or do you want to pray it in? You'll go ahead. I'm going to pray it in. Yes, you are. Oh, well, it, 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 <laughs> my mother is Pastor Vera Hubbard, and I'm going to do this in the name of Jesus for my mother. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the blessings. We hope that the community enjoys this show. Yes, and Lord. we ask that you just keep these people in the center of your hands. In Jesus' name, I Jesus love you. Name. Amen. 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 And uh, once again, thank you for joining us on The Answer of the Lips. Um, Dr. George Fishbeck. Let me say something right at the beginning. Okay. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> so happy. <laughs> All these years I have talked to people on television. I talk to them. I don't like talking to people. I try to pretend that I'm talking with them, but I can't. <laughs> now here, Wanda invites me here, and we have conversation. Yes. Conversation that's different than talking. I love conversation. When, when my time comes, I'm going to say, Lord, give me time for one more conversation. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dr. George, thank you for being here. And thank you. it's such an honor to have you. You're known all over the world. <laughs> and <laughs> and with Judge David Cunningham yes. the third, you know what's so fascinating about him? We see judges all the time on television. We have Judge Matthews, Judge Brown. We have all these people. We have this judge with us in the studio. He has a fascinating background. My God, I met him at um, Meet the Judges in Beverly Hills. <laughs> no! <laughs> and in March, there was an article on him in the Daily Journal that you are just really fascinating. I am so humbled. I really am. So oh, it's great yeah. to be here. <laughs> <laughs> thank, you. thank you so much. And Supervising Judge Marjorie Steinberg, I have to give a shout out to her uh, for just, you know, just she's marvelous. And what you do, what you do, Judge Cunningham, is just uh, the way you serve the community and the way you've given of yourself is so fascinating. Well, we'll get to tell the people about that. Um, Madeline Bryant Camby. That's me. <laughs> This woman is a fascinating family law attorney. Thank you, Wanda. And uh, once again, she's located in Thousand Oaks. If you need a free consultation, uh, give her a call. Don't talk to her for 30 minutes. You know, <laughs> get, get to the heart of the matter. <laughs> Tell her you heard about her on uh, the answer of the lips from the halls of justice. And uh, she'll talk to you for free. And uh, God willing, she's going to help you out. Uh, Madeline. I'm going to start off with a question for our Honorable Judge Cunningham, and I'm going to have you help me interview him because I want him to be comfortable. And uh, Dr. George, you jump in whenever you feel like it because you're special like that. So, um, Judge Cunningham, 
I, after reading this article from the Daily Journal, I like the part because my mother is a minister, and uh, there's a part highlighted that says that you were you raised by your grandmother. Can you tell me a little bit about that and uh, about black and white people working together? And you said that your grandmother used to teach you certain things. And tell me about that, about hate and love and black people, white people. Boy, wow. that's a <laughs> mouthful. <laughs> no, I, I was quite um, fortunate when in my early life, my parents were teen parents mm -hmm. and they married very young. And unfortunately, like with many people, um, their marriage did not work out. And I had some very good grandparents, paternal grandparents, mm -hmm who stepped in and as my parents were trying to work out their relationship, I had the opportunity to spend time with my uh, paternal grandparents for a few years. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I had done is I had a chance to get very close to my father's mother. And she was a minister's wife. Yeah. And she's a beautiful, petite African-American woman. And the traditional notion of a wife um, in the 50s, mm -hmm. uh, this was, I was born in 1955, so I spent from about, 57 to 1960 with her mm -hmm. and I had a chance to get to know her and yeah. she was the type of woman that she would wear hats and gloves yeah. wherever she went and my father remarried in 1960 and so we decided that my grandmother was going to take me to his wedding here in California okay. and everyone in the family took planes except my grandmother who was a little old-fashioned and I later found out that in her early life in the 20s she was a flapper so she wasn't quite <laughs> that old fashioned but by the time she was a grandmother she had a very traditional image. So we were traveling by bus from Memphis to Los Angeles and on the way there we stopped in a little diner in Dallas, Texas and this was in the early 60s, it was in May of 1960 and we came into this diner and my grandmother had on her hat and her white gloves and beautiful looking lady very um, elegantly mm -hmm. dressed and we waited and we sat and we waited and no one would um, wait on us we were the only African American people in the diner and finally the waitress came over and said well ma'am we just don't serve colored people here mm -hmm. so basically that we had to leave so I'm five years old, I'm perplexed, I'm hungry. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready to eat what was ever in her purse. And, uh, but she turned to me because she, she saw the look on my face and she said, look, you know, we have a problem in our society. She said, but I want you to understand that you are as good as anyone in this place. Mm -hmm. Part of the problem is race. And she said, but I want you to also know that many people, and I'm among them, working together, to solve this problem, both black and white. Mm -hmm. And one day, you're gonna be the beneficiary of how we fix this problem. So you just need to be ready and don't have hate in your heart based upon this incident and racist people and how they treat you. And I always remember that because it's such a, a moment that could have been a very hateful moment. We, she could have said, you know, this is terrible and this is how white people treat black people and this is terrible. And instead she, she used it as a teaching moment. So I've always, kept that with me and she's a very special person to me for that and many other reasons. Now one of the things about you that I want to mention is that for a lot of black people we are considered to be like a Heinz 57 mix. Um, <laughs> I, I have to tell you as a black person and, right. and like I said I just I am just so proud to have you in the midst. Um, we need more black images like yourself. Oh, well, thank you. And um, however, I got to tell you, you are a light skinned black man. <laughs> okay. So since you are a light skinned black man, I do know that somebody in your family, I love you, Madeline, had to be white. No. <laughs> and you too, Dr. George, you know, you got a nice little brown thing going on, but you, I know you have some white people in your family. And <laughs> this conversation well, is wonderful. No. <laughs> <laughs> we, have all, we have human beings okay. in our family. And I mean, much like the thing that I love about our great nation is mm -hmm. that it's a very diverse nation and it's yes. got a little bit of everyone. Yes. And I think my family is probably a good example of that. Okay. Uh, we've got European descent, mm -hmm. African-American descent.